Smith Wigglesworth was an early Pentecostal leader from England who lived from 1859 to 1947. He takes the baby, two month old, throws the baby against the wall. <laughs> Smith Wigglesworth was the Todd Bentley of his day. He was known for his violent and bizarre methods of supposedly healing people. This is American Pentecostal evangelist Lester Sumrall, who lived from 1913 to 1996. When Lester Sumrall was 25 years old, he befriended Smith Wigglesworth, who was about 80 years old at the time in England, but in 1939 he had to leave because of the war in Europe. Upon saying goodbye, Wigglesworth told Sumrall that the greatest revival in history, filled with miraculous signs and wonders, would happen during Sumrall's lifetime. His, his face, his face was so strong as he was looking at me and saying, I see it. And I said, what do you see? He said, I see revival coming to planet Earth. He says, I see revival coming to planet Earth. Maybe as, as never, never before, as never before, I, I see revival coming. He says, it would be untold numbers and untold, uncounted multitudes that will be saved. That no man will say, so many, so many, because nobody will be able to count those that will come to Jesus. And, and I, I just stood there, and he was prophesying and seeing a vision, because he said, I, I see it, I see it. He said, the dead will be raised. He said, the arthritic will be healed. He said, cancer will be healed. And, and he began to tell me of the mighty things that no disease would be able to stand before God's people and that it would be a worldwide situation, not local, but it would be a worldwide thrust of God's power and thrust of God's anointing upon mankind. And, and I was listening so intently to it. And then he, he opened his eyes and looked at me and he said, uh, I will not see it. but you shall see it. And that was the end of it. You shall see it. I'm expecting to see, and we're beginning now at this time to see the move of God such as planet Earth has not seen before. That will, that will be so much greater than 2,000 years ago when the church was born. And we're going to have signs and wonders. I prophesy that the greatest revival the earth has ever known is in the offing right now. And as some were saying this morning, it's already falling in certain parts. And we sure don't want to miss it. <laughs> we don't want Africa to get it all. And we don't want South Korea to get it all. We want our share of it. Lester Sumrall died in 1996 at the age of 83 and never saw the revival he and Wigglesworth prophesied. So the prophecy of Smith Wigglesworth was 100% false, and the prophecy of Lester Sumrall was also 100% false. Now here's Dr. Michael Brown at the Brownsville Revival in the mid-1990s. In his very long and emotionally manipulative sermon, Dr. Brown talks about the great Pentecostal pioneers like Smith Wigglesworth and how an even bigger revival is coming, and he's working this crowd into a frenzy in order to make it happen. God's about to break through in our midst. Something's going to happen. I tell you tonight, the greatest and most wonderful and glorious and exciting and awesome days of this revival are yet ahead of us. They are on the immediate horizon in front of us. Come on, friends, we've seen awesome things from God, but we haven't seen what we're supposed to see yet. If this book is true, if this book is true, if this book is true. If this book is true, he should stop talking about the end times revival because it's not in the Bible. There are only warnings against an end times deception, full of miraculous signs and wonders. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. If this book is true, if our God is true, we haven't yet touched what we're supposed to see. We've got a glimpse, but that's it. Let's not insult God by saying this is that yet. 
Oh, we've seen things that few generations have seen. I'm confident we've seen things that no generation in America has seen this century, or at least in the last 90 years, here and in many other parts of the land. And because it's in so many parts of the land, that's why I can say it so confidently. And it's happening among Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostals and Lutherans across denominational lines where those really know the Lord. God's moving. Yep. And the worldwide spread of the gospel is unprecedented in history. What's happened in the last 15, 20 years puts to shame as far as souls coming into the harvest. Anything that the world has ever seen. And yet I believe we're coming to a point of climax where God's going to come down and visit and inhabit and move and live and stretch out his hand and shake everything. We're right on the edge. Imagination. John Lake says about Seymour, God had put such a hunger into that man's heart that when the fire of God came, it glorified him. I do not believe any other man in modern times had a more wonderful deluge of God in his life than God gave that dear fellow, and the glory and power of a real Pentecost swept the world. Oh, friends, it's so close. I felt this at different times in my life, but it's all over me now. It's so close, I can just about get hold of it. We're going to go after God some more. And we're going to do something that I, I distinctly feel the Lord wants us to do. We're going to cry out for a move of God, the likes of which we've never seen among the young people. Richard Crisco, the youth pastor here, is on his knees at the altar. But my heart's just been stirring that God's saying that there's a move coming among the young people. The intensity of which will be such that you won't even be able to compare it to what you've seen up to now. Jesus, Jesus. Go back to playing, Charlie. Help him over. Jesus. I don't say these things lightly, friend. I'd be a fool to. What good does it do to speak empty words? The Holy Spirit's saying it's time. We've seen awesome things. I've boasted around the country and around the world, boasted in Jesus about what he's doing among the young people here. And around America, I'm seeing a move among young people. I'm not in youth ministry, but my heart constantly goes out to young people and heading up a Bible college. I'm around young people all the time. But I've seen things happen in recent years, the likes of which I've wished to see for years and years. I'm so excited and encouraged. But I tell you, it's been like the trickle's going to turn into a flood. What we call the flood before we'll call a trickle. Jesus, see if you can bring them over. Once Brother Richard comes, other youth pastors. Jesus, the Holy Spirit's here, friends. This is a night to break through. This is a night to break through. Something snapped in me a week ago. I'm different. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Would you lift your voices for this generation? God, God, God. Oh. 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 There is a lot more yelling and groaning. Let's just speed this up a bit. Jesus, 
It's a little crowded up here. If we could have all the youth pastors just stand right across the front, if you just make a little room here. Youth pastors. Spouses of youth pastors come up here too. Stand across the front. If, if you're not in youth ministry, just give us a little room here. Jesus. 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 Mighty God. Mighty God, he's in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. Mighty God. Mighty God. Everyone in youth ministry here, just raise your hands so make sure we know who you are. If you're in youth ministry, just raise your hands. Jesus. 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 Mighty God. Mighty God. Would you lift your voice with me for the power of God to touch these young men and women and these older men and women? Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. God help us. God help us. God help us. No! 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 God! No! Kill! Kill! Fire! 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 No! Fire! 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 After the Brownsville Revival, there was no gigantic youth revival. Dr. Michael Brown's prophecy was 100% false. The Brownsville Assemblies of God has struggled with dwindling crowds and financial ruin ever since the revival fizzled out in the years following Dr. Brown's prediction. Dr. Brown was fired from his job as leader of the revival school at Brownsville and then started a competing school where he took many of the students with him, creating much turmoil. The original pastor, John Kilpatrick, abandoned the church and started a competing church about 50 miles away. This church served the world. People's lives were transformed from around the world. You can't go anywhere in the world and not run into someone that was here. Uh, it just was huge. When the revival was going on, there was millions of people coming through here. And there was a, a lot of money going through and, and a lot of buildings being built, a lot of land being bought. And then when that was over and all these people started trickling away, you know, things changed. And so when that changed, we noticed that uh, we still had a lot of stuff, a lot of expense <laughs> and a lot of debt, but we didn't have near the people here helping pay for that debt. We were, ended up actually being three months behind in our mortgage payment. Our mortgage payment was $54,000 a month at that time. I had a member actually take me to go see a bankruptcy litigation lawyer uh, to find out what our rights were in bankruptcy. And it was pretty tough. I pray, Lord, that if there are those in our lives that we see around us that are struggling, that we can be an intercessor for them. If you need a miracle, a miracle, come. Come right now and believe God for that miracle. just become an albatross around our neck. And so what we're doing is we're looking for 7,000 people to donate $1,000 each so that we can raise $7 million to get rid of this whole debt by December of 2013. Not only was there no giant youth revival, they were still trying to pay off their debts about 15 years later. Now, here's one of Dr. Michael Brown's best friends, Sid Roth, in 2018. He was selling Smith Wigglesworth stuff. Warning, this is very disturbing. I have read of the great men and women of faith. One in particular intrigues me so much. His name, Smith Wigglesworth. He had some of the most outrageous miracles I ever heard of in my life. Uh, let me give you one example. Some parents had a two-month-old baby dying in the hospital. 
the parents kidnapped the child, took the child to a Smith Wigglesworth <laughs> meeting, and Smith looks at the child, looks at the parents and say, can I do what God tells me to do? Well, what would you do if you were the parents? The child's dying anyway, right? He takes the baby, two-month-old, throws the baby against the wall. <laughs> People are laughing at this? Really? <laughs> the baby. Then the baby's on the floor. He ta have you ever seen someone play soccer? Have you ever seen them uh, kick a soccer ball? He does that with the baby. What the? I, 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 I don't even have words. The baby falls into the congregation. No crying. Is it dead? 100% healed. No crying. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, God does not instruct people to throw infants against the wall and kick them across the room. This is really sick. I say fire, 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 fire. Fire, fire, fire. Receive the fire. These people are shameless. They have only one constant goal, move product. Notice how the following Sid Roth commercial seems to go on forever. See, see if you can make it all the way to the end. Smith Wigglesworth, often referred to as the Apostle of Faith, was one of the pioneers of the Pentecostal revival that occurred a century ago. Thousands came to salvation in his meetings. Hundreds were healed of serious illnesses and diseases as supernatural signs followed his ministry. Lillian DeFin is the great granddaughter of Smith Wigglesworth, and she carries the same fire, love, and faith that her great grandfather did. She has imparted the fire and anointing of Smith Wigglesworth to many believers. Now she is ready to impart to you the Smith Wigglesworth anointing so you too will walk with Holy Spirit fire, faith and healing. Call now and get Lillian Defends Smith Wigglesworth Healing and Miracles Package, which includes her anointed two-part audio CD teaching, The God of Wow and Now, and her My Life Book Journal. Plus this special bonus, Lillian Defends Great Grandfather's Smith Wigglesworth's two book set, The Greatest Bible Promises for Faith and Miracles and for Healing and Comfort. This exclusive offer is for our its supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9516. Through Lillian Defend's anointed two-part audio CD teaching series, you will understand the secret of Lillian's great-grandfather Smith Wigglesworth's great faith, power, and anointing. Understand how everyone, including you, can do special miracles. Find out the importance of taking communion daily to remember the great exchange of Jesus' life for yours. Discover how to deepen your relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit so you can experience the power, the glory, and the supernatural of God every day. Included on this audio CD series, Lillian Defin prays a prayer of impartation for you to receive the Smith Wigglesworth anointing of faith, fire, and healing. You will also receive Lillian Defin's journal, My Life Book. She prepared for you a way to record your own events, encounters, and words from God. In this journal, you'll find space provided for you to record your dreams, visions, words from God, and important happenings. The journal contains a special blessing from Lillian Defin, keys to Smith Wigglesworth's anointing, instructions on how to use your life book journal, Lillian Defin's glory declarations for you to decree and declare over yourself. Through the keeping of your own My Life Book Journal, you will learn to hear God's voice more clearly, learn benefits of journaling your events and encounters with God, receive an impartation of the Smith Wigglesworth fire and anointing. Plus, you will receive this special bonus, Lillian Defin's great-grandfather Smith Wigglesworth Worth's two book set, The Greatest Bible Promises, for faith and miracles, and for healing and comfort. These two books are full of Smith Wigglesworth's favorite scriptures, powerful quotes, and personal insights. You can keep these books by your bedside, carry them in your purse, and take them wherever you go. Don't miss out on getting Lillian Defend's Smith Wigglesworth Healing and Miracles Package, which includes her anointed two-part audio CD teaching, The God of Wow and Now, and her My Life Book Journal, plus this special bonus, Lillian defends great-grandfather Smith Wigglesworth's two-book set, The Greatest Bible Promises for Faith
faith in miracles and for healing and comfort. This exclusive offer is for our It's Supernatural audience, yours. For a donation of $40, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9516. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9516 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. It's done. Yes, Mr. Frodo. It's over now. This has been a Messed Up Church production. Make sure to check out both the website and YouTube channels for The Messed Up Church and Fighting for the Faith. And please stop paying attention to and giving money to false prophets.